Okay, guys, welcome to the third episode. First things first, like first we get everything else out. We can just put everything else on pause. I got a haircut, and I feel everything. Everything. If it's hot, if it's cold, if it's windy, even if it's not windy, I feel it. It's crazy. Oh my gosh, I miss my blanket over here. Ah, oh, yeah. Anyway, I got my hands out of the way. Second thing. Wow, this week. This week has been incredible for the speed freak and I don't know about you but I love it when companies compete with each other especially when they're regarding speed and performance and look at me I'm the fastest look at me I'm the loudest look at me I am the most economical said every previous owner ever so guys starting with Hennessy American muscle car tuning company they usually modify a whole bunch of Chevrolet products including the Corvette and the Camaro and so much so they've actually made a car to rival the Dodge Demon called the Exorcist. Now that is kind of funny and ironic considering the fact that the Dodge Demon makes around about 600 kilowatts whereas the Exorcist makes 700 kilowatts and is technically faster. But enough about that. We are focusing on top speed in this episode and so much so that the same company took a whole bunch of leftovers, including a Chevrolet V8, 7 liter V8, a uh, Lotus Elise body from the 2002s, around right about that era, and random six speed manual gearbox that I'm sure they found, uh, they found catching dust in their factory. Not to mention two turbos from their other tuned muscle vehicles. They created this, the Hennessy Venom GT. Now, top speed was a claim 270 whatevers, and that is 435 kilometers an hour. Now, that in itself is an amazing feature considering the fact that this car was this car is not wasn't developed over a long period of time and that all of it is leftovers you can find lots of spot you can find a covid 7 liter v8 you can borrow two hennessy turbos and they put all of this together in a sh such a sh short space of time it makes the veyron super sports official record of 429 kilometers an hour Rather redundant, even though lots of people say the Venom GT's of record wasn't official because the owner of the runway got anal and decided no, the Venom GT can only do one run um, in the one direction and not the other. But anyway, let's focus on Hennessy as a company. This same company has unveiled something very, very special on the 1st of November. The 1,193 kilowatt V8 powered rear wheel drive Venom F5. This car, they are claiming that it will finally cross the barrier of 301 miles per hour, which is 484 kilometers an hour, but 301 miles an hour. First of all, that in itself is a huge claim, but considering the amount of development that went into this com compared to the the gt it's actually possible to see that actually happen <laughs> zero to 300 kilometers an hour will be dealt with in under 10 seconds or less zero to 400 kilometers an hour will be dealt with in 30 seconds or less but let's just actually let's just calm or gather our thoughts and actually think about something here if they pull this off, Bugatti's reign will be over. Because despite the Sharon's impressive performance, it just hasn't impressed enough in terms of top speed. Limited to 420 kilometers an hour? No, we don't want to see limits. But that's actually questioning something. Bugatti's reign, is it over already? Well, let's go to Sweden and find out. Our favorite foreign sounding car company with lots of G's and eggs and stuff like that, Koenigsegg, has recent, recently already took the Chiron's crown zero with the record from zero to 400 and down to zero again in 37 seconds, which is amazing, amazing in itself. But Koenigsegg wasn't done. They this weekend, 15 hours after I recorded this video, they posted an uh, image on their Instagram saying they did a top speed in both directions, averaging. Now, please take a seat. 
for you see to get 447 kilometers an hour let me just let me just read out the Veyron Super Sport 429 average on both directions <laughs> Koenigsegg did it 447 kilometers an hour officially the new world's fastest road going production car it just I mean <laughs> and this is from the Gera RS not even the 1-1 one, one, one to 1 But let's calm it down to more relatable news. Uh, Alpha releases the Stavio QV's official performance figures. And obviously, no surprise here, they're slightly faster to 100, but end up matching the Julia's top speed, despite its bulky size. Uh, Ferrari announces the Evo upgrade for FXXK. Obviously, that's not relatable at all, my bad. But it's lighter, more downforce, and obviously, way more money. Dubai Sheiks for you. Um, Nissan facelift of the X-Trail, which has been released here in South Africa, as well as the 370Z. Uh, I'm not even going to bother putting up a picture of the 370Z because it's purely um, for the interior. And quite frankly, I couldn't care less. BMW has something I couldn't care, I actually should care less about. is BMW replacing the 5 Series GT, which was obviously the chunkiest elephant in the room at the time. Funny enough, when it was white, it was kind of convenient. <laughs> Well, with the 6 series GT and it's available in SA looks much better than 5 series GT but once again it's still no point niche making at its finest and once again we're expecting to sell another let's say two to the people maybe a replacement for the people that bought the last 5 series GT and guys thank you so much for watching guys check out the links below for the Venice or the Hennessy Venom F5 video uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video